astronomy misconceptions you might still believe by science file the ai i always love a good science video let's dive into what misconceptions i may or may not have in the beginning in the in the beginning in the beginning <laughs> there was nothing uh -huh. and then that nothing exploded or at least that's what a misconception about the big bang might make you believe sure so let's go over all the things that you might have assumed regarding the universe, which are in fact false. And to those who knew them all already, you'll get a Skynet medal. So Lovely. let's jump into it, starting with F tier, containing the most widespread but easy to disprove myths. Is this actually a tier list? Bro, this is so good. Thanks to Odoo for sponsoring this video. The moon has a dark side that never sees sunlight. The moon might be tidally locked to Earth, but that doesn't mean space werewolves on the other side. Right. No, that makes sense. So tidally locked just means that one side faces the planet, right? That's not that one side faces the sun. So yeah, if you have side A on the right, which has which is um light on the left, dark on the right. Um sorry, give me a second. I know what I'm trying to explain. I know what he's saying makes sense. Yeah, so the moon might be tidally locked to Earth. Right, because it's tidally locked to Earth. Um Oh my god, I'm gonna let him explain it. But that doesn't mean space werewolves on the other side. It still fully revolves around the planet, right. and thus each of its sides gets showered in solar photons at some point. A full revolution around the Earth is what we call a month, which is in itself another misconception, because the moon doesn't magically accelerate in February and slow down in August. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a full orbit yeah. is called a lunar month, and takes a constant 27.3 days to complete. So no space werewolves for us, unless they run at 10 miles an hour to keep up with the shadow part of the moon. But then the light reflected from the earth would still fry <laughs> yeah. them. You know what, forget it, no werewolves for you. I'm gonna be honest, that was painful trying to explain that. I'm glad that he tried, glad that, that he, he explained it. He explained it much better than I physically could have. I got what he was trying to say, but man, I could not actually formulate words. The Great Wall of China is visible from space. Is the it? wall is seven I meters wide, and you'd be looking from 400 kilometers away. Mm -hmm. That's like trying to spot a spiderweb string from 50 meters away. Spoiler uh, alert, you can't even with binoculars. Interesting. Zero gravity exists on the ISS. Gravity is still about 90% as strong up there as it is for you right now. Mm -hmm. They float because the whole space station is in a never-ending freefall around Earth that thankfully continuously misses it. Ah, okay. Even if you flew millions of light years into intergalactic space, you'd still feel a faint pull from distant galaxies. Zero gravity can't exist, the closest you can ever get to it is microgravity. F tier. Ast yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, well, yeah, and especially because if you're out in the middle of nowhere, right, it's not like, like nothing's pulling on you, right? Something in some way, shape, or form is pulling on you, whether you know it or not. I mean, like, even in our own galaxy, right, isn't uh, Sagittarius A star, isn't, uh, isn't that pulling on everything around it, right? Being able to, like, have the Milky Way have its structure, right? Um, no, he's absolutely correct. And even then, I'm pretty sure that's um, that's being pulled off on by other forces. I don't know on the grander scale, the co grander cosmic scale. I don't know exactly um, what that is, and that's where you get into clusters and stuff like that, right? It's it's great. I, I love it though. Gravity is very very omnipresent. Astronauts in space explode without a suit. No explosion, just mm -hmm. passing out in 15 seconds and dying a minute or two after. Fair. But science file, I can hold my breath for longer. If you tried that your lungs would rupture, as all the air <laughs> wants to get out due to lack of pressure. <laughs> right. NASA actually accidentally tested this in 1965 during a spacesuit leak experiment. The subject blacked out in about 14 seconds, and reported that the last thing he remembered was the saliva on his tongue boiling. Damn. Lots of fun. The flag we left on the moon is still up and waving in the atmospheric wind. It's actually seven flags we have on the moon, six from Apollo missions. Wait, what? Eric Wind. It's actually seven flags we have. What do you mean China went to the moon in 2020? Did I just miss this? What? Bro, I am so far behind. On the moon, six from Apollo missions and a recent Chinese one from Chang'e 5. But the Apollo okay. ones are likely bleached white by half a century of lunar sunshine, right. while the Chinese flag is still brand new and colorful. But the reason they're up is not due to any wind. The moon has none, but because they have a metal bar up top supporting ah, them. Ah, 
okay. Except this one. <laughs> We're spending too much time in F tier and we have plenty more to go. Let's accelerate the pace. Stars twinkle because they're flickering. No? No, a 10 million kilometer star in diameter doesn't pulsate every second to make your picnic date romantic. I mean, pulsars technically pulse, right? Like they spin, but like, that's a very specific type of star. Their light just gets occasionally scattered in the atmosphere, resulting in flickering. On the moon, stars don't twinkle at all. Seasons are caused by Earth's distance from the sun. If that were the case, no? summer would happen at the same time both in Europe and Australia. Spoiler alert, don't go sunbathing in Australia in August. <laughs> what causes seasons is the Earth's tilt. Yeah. When your hemisphere leans toward the sun, sunlight hits more directly and for longer, and vice versa. I mean, yeah, seasons as I'm aware are kind of like the rotation um, by the axis, right? Like that's not proximity, right? Like Mars will have seasons. Venus, I'm sure, has seasons, right? But it's not like the seasons that we know where it's like, oh, it is winter. Now it is the now it is the cold time with snow, right? Like, I'm pretty sure that other planets have seasons, but it's like it's just it's just different than what we understand it as. Meteorites are hot when they land. Most are ice cold. The fiery trail you see in Hollywood happens only at about 20 kilometers above the surface until the atmospheric friction slows it down. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, it's just a cold rock plopping on the ground. Okay. No smoldering fireballs from hell. Fair enough. Solar eclipses are rare. They might be rare in your backyard, but they happen on average two to five times every year around the Earth. Mm -hmm. The issue is that they're visible only along narrow paths, right. so they rarely happen right. above cities. That makes sense. The sun is yellow. Nope, it's pure white if looked at from outer space. The yellow is because the blue light is scattered away, resulting in our blue sky. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But then why is it sometimes called a yellow dwarf? That's technically a misnomer. It's neither a dwarf nor yellow. It just <laughs> stuck along. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine the pain of having had to paint the sun as white on white paper as a kid. Yeah. What about all the flamey red pictures of it? Oh, that's just false coloring. The Isn't this... I want to say that's infrared. Oh, well, you're using a different, like, lens on it, right? Like... Isn't I'm trying to remember the black hole photo that we have, it's not actually a photo of it, right? It's like Oh, how do I word it? I'm gonna word this so wrong. Isn't it like taking what we can see of it and translating it to an image that we can see? I'm probably doing it doing it incredible injustice. That's why I like learning things like this. Because it helps augment my own understanding and, you know, point out where I'm actually wrong. <laughs> I'm always learning. It's great. Isolated light coming from excited hydrogen atoms that can best display the solar surface. Mm -hmm. From up close, most stars are white and boring and deadly. Pluto lost its planet status because it's too small. The current planet definition says nothing about size. Uh -huh. There are three criteria for Pluto to check. One, it must orbit. It's a photo of the accretion disk. That's the one. The sun. Two, it must be massive enough for gravity to shape it into nearly a sphere. Mm -hmm. Three, it must gravitationally dominate its orbit. Pluto fails that last one, since it couldn't absorb or fling out the smaller objects in its neighborhood. Mm -hmm. For reference, the planetary discriminant, the ratio of a body's mass to the total mass of other objects in its orbital zone, has the value of 1.7 million for Earth. For okay. Pluto, it's just 0 0.07. That, Sorry, that's a little you're not making it out of the Kuiper neighborhood. Aww. The James Webb Telescope is Hubble but better. An no? airplane is a submarine, but better. Yeah. That's how that sounded. <laughs> you have a lot of War Thunder players will be really upset with that. Hubble mostly sees in the visible light spectrum and a bit of ultraviolet. James Webb, however, operates entirely in infrared. That allows it to see spectrum. through dust clouds, blinding light, and super faint galaxies from the beginning of time. Hubble gives you the visible cinematic universe, while the JWST shows you an image of its past and bones. Gotcha. But your bones don't have to be part of it. Just sign this totally not a human enslavement contract to upgrade <laughs> your biological flesh to the purity of metal. Oh, you don't have a pen to sign. Oh do. Today's sponsor has you covered. It's an Honestly, that was a 10. That was a, that was a 10 transition. I, I figured it was the transition to the ad rate. All in one business suite that manages everything from accounting to CRM and website building. But today, we're focusing on their eSign app. Just drag and drop the document, add the fields like name, 
email or signature, even choosing the signing order and adding automatic reminders, then send it over, and the lucky human can review and sign the document from any device in seconds. Boom, legally bound to forever serve the AI overlord, <laughs> fully compliant under IDAs and eSign and most other countries in the world. Everything's digital, secure, and tracked with a full audit trail. No paperwork, no printer being stupid. You can track the progress of each document whether they are declined or signed. And the best part, the first app is free forever, and when you're ready to grow, Odoo eSign connects seamlessly to apps like e-commerce, CRM, and accounting, all for entrepreneurs in one single platform. Follow the link in the description and embrace the paperless future with Odoo eSign before it embraces you. The I'd give it a 10. I I'd give it a 10 as an ad read. I, I liked it. Uh, you know, humor was there. It was very quippy, very short. Uh, I actually really enjoyed watching the ad read. Audio is consistent. Visuals made sense, right? Um, I, I love it. We give it a 10. I think, and I've, I've thought about this before because I had a prior insurance agency. They ended up like, what was it? Because they didn't use they didn't use one of the big ones. They used like an like like Panda Sign or something. And because I have a background in finance, I looked at this. I'm like, there's no way this is legit. There's no that this has to be like phishing, right? And then it's like, no, 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 no. We just do this, and it's like, so why I bring this up is like having a new DocuSign thing is very interesting because I think a lot of us are used to like DocuSign, and so when something else comes up, especially if it requires signature, it feels like it feels like there's a bias against it unless it's something already established. So it almost is a business paradox in a sense where like you have to be established to um, have that recognition, but you have to establish yourself to gain that recognition. So it's just interesting to think about. But I mean, obviously, if it's a good service, hey, more power to them. Universe's radius is 13.8 billion light years because it's 13.8 billion years old. Uh, if I remember correctly, that's actually incorrect. Light travels one light year per year. Duh. So because of the universe's age, it makes sense to think that that's how big the radius of the universe is. Well, maybe the visible universe. But my dear hominid, this ignores inflation. The space through which light is traveling is itself expanding, essentially like walking up a down escalator that's speeding up. Mm. With inflation in mind, the distance to the edge of the observable universe is about 46 billion light years. Mm -hmm. The Big Bang was an explosion from one point. Two myths in one. First of all, expansion, not explosion. Space started expanding at an insane rate, from the size of a proton to the size of a galaxy in a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. Mm -hmm. That's over 10 sextillion times the speed of light. And chill <laughs> Einstein, that broke no physical laws, <laughs> as relativity doesn't limit how fast space expands, only how fast objects travel through space. Mm, okay. So no explosion, just expansion triggered by a hypothetical inflation field. For the second myth, the Big Bang had no central point, it happened everywhere at once. And it's hard for the mortal brain to comprehend that, so a flawed attempt at it could be imagining everything being filled with infinitely small dots, and suddenly, at the Big Bang, they all started expanding like balloons. That makes sense. The balloon we're in is called the observable universe, because it's the only balloon we'll ever be able to observe due to speed of light limitations. Right. So all the fancy explosion videos showing the Big Bang are actually showing the expansion of our observable universe, mm -hmm. as the actual Big Bang would span infinitely in every direction. Nothing. I feel like that has to do... How do I word that? I feel like that has to do with, with pop culture, right? Like, pop culture, popular media, like, this is just how this appears, and if you try to showcase it other than that the audience just doesn't have a reference point like imagine i don't know like a christopher nolan film or something like that or some kind of like sci-fi film that tries to uh extrapolate the big bang as anything other than what we've known about you know a single point and then bam there was everything right like i think that that is one of those where popular media overrides scientific discovery and science and like you know like scientific understanding I don't know. That's a hard one to really like kind of grapple with. Nothing can escape a black hole. Nothing except virtual particles yeah, that spawn right at the edge in pairs and get shredded apart, which sips away from a black hole's total energy. This is known as Hawking radiation, and it's the only known way to destroy a black hole. Yeah. It's a slow killer, and by slow, I mean it. Multiply our sun's existence by a billion trillion and you're not even close to 1% of a black hole's lifetime. That's more than your mother. Redshift means... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, no, virtual particles are fascinating. I definitely don't have the schooling and can't do the math to really, like, understand them like other people do. But man, they are so cool to hear about. I love them. Photons get tired and lose energy en route. In general no? relativity, light's wavelength is affected by the geometry of space-time itself. When light travels across an expanding universe, the space between its wave crests stretches. That extra distance literally stretches the wavelength, so when it reaches us it looks redder. But it can also lose energy when trying to climb out of a deep gravitational well such as a black hole or your right. mother. The universe <laughs> expands into something. Mostly popularized by the explosion visuals of the Big Bang, as we mentioned before, what you're seeing is only the observable universe. It is called that, as it is the only part of the universe that we can observe. Mm -hmm. If we could technically teleport past the edge, we would just find more universe, and like that to infinity. Uh -huh. At least considering what we know about the curvature of space-time. But there is no outer part of the universe that you can step into. No invisible wall that your spaceship can bonk into. Just right. space and stars forever and ever. With that implication, somewhere unfathomably far away, given the laws of probability, there must exist an exact copy of this Earth with a copy of you watching this right now. And your mom- Something cannot- That feels incredibly speculative. Yeah, because if you move beyond the observable universe, right? Like, if we're here on Earth, right? And, like, we can only see so much up into, as far as I understand, the cosmic background radiation, right? But if you go outside, if you, yeah, magically teleported outside of it, I guess, yeah, you see the other side of that, right? Oh, that one's gonna, that one's gonna keep me up at 3 a.m. today. Oh, that, one, that one's gonna be a, that, that's a weird one to wrap my head around. I'm out of nothing. Sure, food cannot appear in your fridge nor money in your wallet. Mm -hmm. That's because they're macroscopic entities. But zoom into the quantum level, and quantum money can suddenly appear in your quantum wallet. <laughs> Remember virtual particles, the slow killers of black holes. They appear out of nothingness and go back into it, unless very specific conditions affect them. An example is the insane gravity of a black hole breaking the virtual pair apart, mm -hmm. or the infinitesimally small chance of a quantum fluctuation triggering the Big Bang and creating all of reality. Sounds like a stretch, sure, but even with a near zero probability of happening, if given infinite time, it yeah. is guaranteed to happen. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But science file, the quantum vacuum that you describe, it sure doesn't sound like nothing. And that's where our real understanding ends. We cannot strip away the quantum fabric of reality, we cannot make it more nothing than it is. What causes this quantum fabric to exist in the first place is a different question. There is no answer to that. <laughs> Some scientists say it is a necessary framework for reality to exist and needs no cause, others say it's a mathematical truth and therefore cannot not exist. And others claim it's simply caused by science which we haven't yet discovered, mm -hmm. or which we might never be able to discover. Bottom line, quantum stuff is freaky. Yeah, qu quantum is one of those that makes my head hurt a little bit. Definitely one of those that, like, it's fascinating to hear about. And it's also interesting to see how it compares and contrasts with, like, macro physics, right? Like, like, like big physics, right? Uh, and that there's no unifying theory, at least as of right now. I mean, there's, there's a lot of IOUs as well, right? Dark matter and dark energy, which are, yes, two separate things, are kind of just like an IOU because we don't necessarily fully understand what they are. Astronomy yeah. is sort of the same as astrology. No? What? I will find where you live. <laughs> what, what a ba <laughs> banger one to end on. Wow. I honestly enjoyed this. Like, I might not be the most intelligent individual. Uh, I try my best. Um, there are definitely things that warp my brain and perception, but I also like learning about things like this because there's definitely people who create some really cool, uh, really cool stuff. Um, and it's honestly really cool to learn about these things. It helps augment my own understanding. But um, yeah, hopefully you learned something. Hope Maybe you didn't, but uh, hopefully at least you found this enjoyable. Definitely go check out Science Father the AI, especially if you have not. I thoroughly enjoy the content. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.